In today's video, we look at the electrical test or inspection of a slip ring motor. We will start with the continuity of windings. And I've got here a motor uh, specifically used for training. You can see the connections is brought to an outside uh, or to the top of the box. I've got studs there, 10 of them. And uh, the labels is taped up. I've got my multimeter ready. And I've already selected the ohm scale, probably the lowest. If you have auto range, it's good. Generally, you can put it on the 200 ohm scale. That's good enough. This multimeter has 600. So I'll start uh, testing my terminals and see what I have. Already I found about 17 to 18 ohms, 22.1 and 22. So between those points are windings. That tells me kind of it's the rotor because of the slip rings design. I've tested the other points, I've got nothing and there again I found those. So I have to remember between those points I'll do a drawing um, shortly, add that into this video. And I want to just kind of explore another idea to make sure that this is the rotor. I will put some crocodile clips on my lead heads and put fixed connections and kind of turn the shaft and there you can see 17.1 if I turn that shaft that's the bushes onto the slip rings making connection because we found the readings that's not exactly the same and we want them close together but the readings that you will record will be the first readings. You don't turn the shaft and then take those readings because you have to consider the resistances between the bushes and the slip rings. These readings you see now is not going to be recorded. You will record only the first readings you took without turning the shaft. This just confirms I'm working now currently with the rotor windings. Between the, those points there are windings. The other six that's left would probably be your stator and that would be tested in such a way uh, similar to or the same as a standard three phase induction motor you will find that there's three sets of windings between those terminals so I will start testing and those two don't have any reading they are found the reading 19.5 so I know those two, I will not go back there. I move on to the next set. Nothing there, that is a winding. There I found another winding, 19.2, very close to 19.5. And obviously the other two points will be another reading. 19.3, that's very close. So if I look at those studs, uh, I can say the left hand ones is ABC moving downwards and on the right hand side, far right, uh, DEF. I'm just confirming again, uh, depending on where I start measuring. So this is what I found. I've just documented it very quickly and briefly or keep it in your mind's eye that for the IRT test you have to know where the points are. In fact, the center points is meant for bridging out or should be bridged out if you know the connection for a slip ring or the circuits that you will work with. That's generally what you look at. So here yeah, I've documented my readings. You can see the first set on the left hand side I've documented as I found it the very first time. All right. That takes care of that test and now we have the IRT tester or the mega. I will remove my bridge points to prepare for the IRT test and also what I just in my mind's eye in this case the labels is there and we will use these labels to know where we're going to test. So firstly, my mega again, battery test. I can see there the battery is good. Uh, if I want to see if the leads is good, I can on the ohm scale just put the leads together 
and make sure the leads is good. This is just normal general testing before we use our equipment or measuring testing equipment. Again, we see that that's the ohm scale. We want to use the mega ohm scale where naught is uh, contact, which is on the far right, and no contact is on the left where you can see it. So I want to do now the insulation resistance between windings and earth. This is the only other test with the IRT that we want to do. And so we want to just confirm that these windings are not making contact with each other, or at least with earth. And the earth would be the casing. And so we can start and we want that needle not to move. That would be a good reading. One mega almost there. That's the, that's note on the scale there. And so our least reading would be 0.5. That's a good reading. Those are all good readings. The needle doesn't even move. Those are the windings and we only test those points. We don't have to go down the center. That concludes the analog maker. And uh, just for interest sake, we want to just have a look at the digital tester to see if it does the exact same thing. And so we will do the same test again. Again, just the same motor. We want to do earth to all the windings. We've identified the windings as per our continuity of windings test. We know where our windings are. And we're not going to do the center. We will do only the far left and the far right. So we will put the meter on. Uh, we've got our own scale there. And we're going to just test and see if the battery is good. It doesn't have a battery to test, but the, uh, there is a green light on the right. And if I check the leads, it should go to naught. That also means contact. So even on the mega ohm scale, if there's contact, it would move towards naught, which is bad. We want that reading on the screen, no contact. One representing, in this case, uh, infinity. So I put my crocodile clip on the earth, I test. Interestingly, I find over a thousand mega ohms. So with regards to the analog scale, this would deflect all the way to the left. Same year, 1300, probably slightly more if I keep it longer, moving towards infinity. Remember on the analog scale, there is no 1300. It moves to 200, 100, 200, 500, 800, and then it's infinity. So this reading is there somewhere between 800 and infinity you might as well just write infinity. So there we get a flinch, but it goes to one. That's good readings. That's all good readings. Okay, so that it takes us to the end of our IRT test for the digital tester. And so this is what we've uh, recorded. We've actually recorded the infinity sign is the analog tester and the written values is from the digital tester. And with that, we've come to the end of this video. Thank you.